This is the fourth of our presentations on hierarchical clustering with uh, R and what we're going to look at now is dendrograms but first a bit of revision so that's just the R code from the last time so we were dealing with this data set called cars and I have it a there we are cars it's just all of it there so the head of cars and essentially what I've done there is I've taken a subset of it uh, cars.use oops cars.use is just the numeric variables okay and then what I've done is I've created a dis distance matrix okay uh, using the Euclidean distance and that creates a distance matrix there and now what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, call that car dist just the distance matrix and what I'm now going to do is use hierarchical clustering and I'm going to provide that proximity matrix that distance matrix as an argument I'm also going to use a linkage method uh, called We'll only do ward D, okay, okay, and that creates a a a, a clustering and a, a hierarchical clustering solution. H cluster for hierarchical clustering. So I'm going to save that as cars H cluster. So that's where we're up to so far. I've mentioned previously stuff like standard uh, or standardization, Euclidean distance, linkage methods. Not too much in linkage methods. There's quite a lot to it. Um, very very detailed. Um, it, that sort of stuff would be more so for like private research, like the, the difference between them all. So anyway, where we got to is we have this uh, solution called cars H cluster, and that's what it looks like there. Not mm, particularly interesting to look at. But what I want to do is, that's where we got to so far, but I really haven't really got a sense of what I've done yet. So what I'm going to do now is look at dendrograms. A dendrogram, dendro for, it sounds like tree, and that's exactly what it is. It's the main tool for looking at hierarchical clustering solutions, and it's a dendrogram, tree like, tree base, tree structure, uh, that to visualize the uh, tree structured uh, graph, uh, used to visualize the results of hierarchical clustering calculations. It lists the ob objects which are clustered along the y-axis and the distance at which the cluster was formed along the sorry, the x-axis is the lists the objects a list of the objects and uh, for here we have 38 objects in our cars so that's quite a lot but if you consider that some um, data sets that might have a thousand items that's quite a big dendrogram and uh, the distance at which they're clustered. So it sort of, it sort of shows the order in which things have been clustered. Uh, distances along the x-axis, sorry, actually along the y-axis, are not particularly meaningful. Uh, so it's just to make it easier to read, basically. So uh, I'll show you that, what I mean now by that in a second. So um, essentially, what we do here is we have this h-plus solution. Uh, uh, there's a couple of other things I'm sort of going to mention later on about other. I'm using base R at the moment, but there's other solu uh, other approaches you can take to clustering analysis with R, and there's other packages. And I'm going to sort of leave that and sort of uh, mention it again when I get there. Uh, but essentially, what I've done there is use H cluster hierarchical clustering to construct it, cluster analysis. And now what I want to, I want to do is visualize it. I want to see my dendrogram. Okay, so what do I do? So I have, I plot it basically, I plot my solution. So first off, plot cars.hclust. And let's give that a second. There we go. That is our clustering, uh, that's our uh, cluster, uh, clustering analysis. So let's have a quick look at this. What happened here is a very on 20, car 22 and car 33 got paired up very uh, they got paired very e uh, quickly car 29 and car 32 got paired up as a subcluster 21 got added to the cluster that had that includes 22 and 33 if you just look them down here and so on so you might sort of see that there depending on how you look at it uh, is there two clusters, three clusters, five clusters, and so on? There's no actual unique sort of proper solution. It's a sort of judgment call as to sort of say how many clusters are there. 
Uh, you can also put in the names of the cars, by the way. I'm going to sort of skip that because it's just a, it's already a bit dense. You probably need to put that on full screen just to get a a good sort of sense of what I'm looking at. It's just that's just sort sort of what happens with R. Um, let's see now. So that's how we come up with a dendrogram. Basically, we want to sort of use it a bit. So uh, that's it there again. Uh, but uh, this was done with a different uh, agglomeration schedule. This was done with complete uh, rather than Ward's distance. Uh, let's just sort of see what I have down here because I've sort of forgotten. Oh yeah, that's what happens if you put in the names of the cars. I'm going to sort of skip that bit. You can actually put in the names of the cars. Do you know what? I'll do it. Labels, cars, the names of the cars. That's one of the... the, the let's go here. Um, let's get rid of that. And let's see the plot now. My plot. Uh, that just gives me the names of the cars. So it tells me, for example, that the Mazda GLC and the Datsun 210, as far as the variables I'm using are concerned, they are very similar. Uh, just as a remark, actually, that cars here, the labels, uh, cars is the name of the data set, and car is, car is just the one of the first variables there. So. It's an it's an actual name of the car, the type of car. There, it's just a uh, it's one of the columns of the data set. So that's just the, where the names are coming from. Oops, there we go. So it's the 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 names of all the cars I am using. Okay, so that's the dendrogram. Now that's great. Let's sort of oops uh, see if I can sort of come up with a bit more. Okay knowledge out of this. So what I'm going to do here is, let's just sort of see what I have down here. If you choose any height along the y-axis of the dendrogram and move along the dendrogram counting the number of lines that you cross, each represents a cluster that... Okay, so essentially if I want to sort of pick a particular height here, suppose I'm going at the level 2, okay, how many times do I cross a line? Uh, 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six. So actually, at the height two, I actually have can sort of say there are six clusters. If I go at height, let's say four, I can sort of say that there are three clusters. Okay. So if you choose any height along the y-axis, it's sort of yeah. So what? So what we want to do here is try and sort of get a bit more out of this. So. Uh, first off, looking at the dendrogram for the car data, there are clearly two distinct groups. The right-hand group consists of uh, two more distinct clusters, while the observations seem to be all clustered in around the same height. Let's just check back and start to see what I mean by that. Let's get rid of that. Bring this back. So, um, there's two main clusters here. This cluster here on the left-hand side, and this cluster on the right-hand side, uh, which seems to be made up of two more subclusters, this subcluster here and this subcluster here. Um, so it's you might sort of say, all right, two or three uh, clusters is about right. Now that is not to sort of say that uh, solutions with more clusters, for example, breaking it up to five or six, as we sort of seen earlier, that that's not to say that's useless, that it's not meaningful. But uh, it's just sort of saying that two or three seems to be a good place to start. Um, there's a, you have to sort of remember that there's, there's a lot to this uh, stuff that it's just very uh, judgment call sort of. Yeah, uh, you you're just sort of making a judgment call on it. Okay, what we could do now is we can plot a use this thing to sort of plot. Uh, sort of identify groups a bit better and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, use uh, rectangles to draw rectangles around the branches of the dendrograms corresponding to the correspond uh, to the various heights so first the dendrogram is cut at a certain level and then a rectangle is drawn around certain branches so let's go back here here's my H cluster. let's just plot that again and just sort of reset because I've done a few things here now that I have to just uh, I lose track of what I'm doing so let's just put that back as was there we go uh, 
Now, that's our clustering solution there again. And what I'm going to do this time now is I'm going to sort of see uh, can I put in a. Uh, by the way, that 300 is a typo. So I, that should actually just say 3. That just was got left over from a previous presentation. So I'm going to sort of see what are the clusters when the height is 3. So first off, I draw my plot and then hit, uh, cut a uh, rectangle hit dot h clust and that's a little command that will do this it's actually oh no there we go uh, it should have been 300 sorry let's go back there again and do that again there we go so at the height 300 which is around here it sort of shows it, it it groups all of the various subclusters in together. So we have at uh, height equals three hundred, and uh, we have this cluster here, car twenty nine, thirty two, twenty one, twenty two, thirty three. That's one cluster, and there are four clusters all together. If we change the height, let's just change it to let's say five hundred, and sort of see what would happen. Let's go back to R. Let's shut that down. I'm just going to redraw the whole thing from scratch and now put in my rectangles and just change it to 500. Oops, 400. Oh, okay, 400 will do. That was actually just a sort of uh, um, mistyped. Um, there we are. It's it's actually the four clusters again. It's actually just there's no difference between that and 300. So let's just do it one more time where I go for 500 and, and see what happens now. There we are. We have three clusters uh, at 500. I'll just sort of spread that out a bit. So that is how we might use dendrograms, how we construct dendrograms and how we might use them. So essentially, it's essentially just this matter of plotting your solution and also... Um, and also using that rect.hclus command just to sort of try and use make sort of, sort of sense out of what you're dealing with. Again, I'm picking heights there, 300, 500, and so on. Ultimately, if we pick it, uh, there's just a sort of a, we we we're looking at this and stuff. What's this? We're making a judgment call basically about what's the appropriate height to make a cut. Uh, and there's no right answer. Previously we had four, now we have three. We could go up one more and pair it down to two if we, take, for example, cut it at height 1000. It's all a judgment call, really, and it's just, it's more so about what is relative to what. Anyway, that's dendrograms and plotting uh, your solution for hierarchical clustering.